Whether you lend any credence to them or not, it's always fun to hear what the fans are dreaming up about your favorite TV shows like Dragon Ball Z. Sometimes they're funny, sometimes they're ridiculous, and sometimes they make so much sense that they could change everything. Before we get started on DBZ theories though, there is a YouTube fan theory that if you subscribe to CBR, you'll be the first to know about all the latest and greatest videos. Might be worth checking out. Not very good! <laughs> Better off without Goku. Oh, yeah, I'd say we're lucky to be alive. It's always the same in DBZ. Goku isn't around because he's dead on a different planet or recuperating. The other fighters get their butts handed to them, and Goku finally shows up at the last minute. He saves the day, and the Z fighters celebrate by having a barbecue or something. It seems like there is no victory without Goku. He is definitely the most powerful fighter, but if you think about it, there wouldn't even be a need to fight if Goku didn't exist. Hear me out. Raditz comes to Earth looking for Goku. Upon hearing about the Dragon Balls during the Raditz fight, Vegeta and Nappa come to Earth. That in turn brings Frieza to Earth. Then you have Dr. Jiro who created the androids and Cell to exact revenge on Goku. And of course because there is now a bunch of Saiyans on Earth, there is enough power to release Majin Buu. Goku is a villain magnet. He's like Vosh the Stampede from Trigon. Trouble follows him wherever he goes. It's not necessarily his fault, he's just a really strong fighter so people want to fight him. Sure he always ends up saving the world somehow, but think of all the times that people died or planets were destroyed because of his fights. When it comes down to it, the world would be a better place without Goku. Krillin is the most skilled fighter. All right, you got it. <laughs> 206, not bad. Everyone knows Krillin is about as useful in a fight as Jar Jar Binks. He was able to hold his own in Dragon Ball, but as a human surrounded by Saiyans in Dragon Ball Z, he's just no match for their strength and the enemies they face. However, that doesn't mean he isn't a skilled fighter. In fact, there is a theory floating around that Krillin is actually the most skilled fighter on the show. Outlandish, maybe, but let's look at the evidence. Krillin was able to last against the likes of Frieza, the android, Cell, and even Kid Buu. He might not be strong enough to defeat any of them, but that's because he's limited by his human body. If Krillin had been born a Saiyan, he'd almost be as powerful as Goku. After all, they were training together since they were kids. Now that they are older and pretty much stronger than Krillin, he has no option but to improve his skills in order to survive. Can he really even put a dent in Perfect Cell or Majin Buu? Probably not, but taking a hit from one of their powerful attacks or lasting even just a minute against such powerful foes is a feat in and of itself. So we can crack jokes about the little cue ball and give him a hard time for being a weakling, but let's not forget that Krillin is the strongest human on Earth. Bulma's mother is an android. How do you do? I'm Bulma's mother, Mrs. Brief. <laughs> Now we know where Bulma gets her good looks. Panchi is a hot grandma. There's no denying it. In fact, she almost looks better and better the older and older she gets. But how in the world is this possible? After all, everyone gets noticeably older as the series goes on. Even her daughter Bulma starts to look a bit aged as she approaches 40. People have speculated that Panchi is actually an android. Bulma's father is a scientist and supposedly the richest man in the world. He would have endless resources at his disposal to create whatever he dreams up. If Dr. Jiro could figure out how to do it, it should be no problem for the creator of Capsule Corporation because he was always hard at work developing new inventions. He got lonely and wanted to share his life with someone. So using his vast wealth and superior intellect, Dr. Briefs created an android wife. A bit weird, sure, but every other older man in the series gets a bit creepy when it comes to the ladies, so why not Bulma's dad? He didn't have time to date and find a real wife, so he made one. But if she was an android, how did they have a child together? Well, Dr. Jiro created Android 18, and she was able to have a child with Krillin, so if the technology exists, there's no reason why Dr. Briefs couldn't find out how to develop it and create the perfect android mate. Sonic the Super Saiyan Hedgehog Many people have noticed the similarities between Super Saiyans and Super Sonic. They both power up tremendously, they both get yellow hair, and they both get all glowy. Seeing as how the first appearance of a Super Saiyan was in 1991, the Super Sonic entered the scene shortly after in 1992. It's not a stretch to assume that the former was inspiration for the latter, but it's not just the aspect of a Super Saiyan that seems to be instrumental in the development of Sonic. In fact, you can draw a multitude of comparisons between the two works. For instance, in Dragon Ball Z, there are seven Dragon Balls to collect, and in Sonic there are seven Chaos Emeralds to collect. The characters are very similar as well. Sonic and Goku are both fun-loving, carefree heroes. Shadow and Vegeta are rivals of the protagonist, who start as antagonists but eventually become good. Silver and Trunks are both time travelers who journey to the past to save the world. Knuckles 
Tails is Piccolo, Tails is Krillin, Amy is Chi-Chi, the similarities are endless. Some people even theorize that because they are so similar, they are actually parallel universes. We did learn from Dragon Ball Super that there are 12 universes still in existence. Maybe Sonic's is one of them. Is there a Sonic the Hedgehog and Dragon Ball Z crossover series on the horizon? Probably not, but hey, one can hope. Half Saiyans are stronger than purebloods. Super Saiyans are quite a spectacle to witness, and with most of the Saiyans dead and gone, it makes all the special to see the remaining Saiyans achieve such impressive status. It took Goku well into adulthood before he could attain the status of a Super Saiyan, and the same goes for Vegeta, the two most powerful Saiyans alive. Or are they? This theory suggests that even though these guys are full-blooded Saiyans, it's actually the Half Saiyans that have the biggest potential for becoming the most powerful. The argument behind this theory has to do with adrenaline and emotion. Saiyans are a proud race who tend to leave emotions aside in favor of strategy while fighting. But we've seen time and time again that it is actually emotions that drive Saiyans to reach their full potential. It wasn't until Frieza killed Krillin that Goku was able to go Super Saiyan for the first time. Vegeta couldn't even touch Lord Beerus until Beerus hit Bulma, sending Vegeta into a blind rage. It was even said that Vegeta surpassed Goku in power at that moment. While it takes a lot for Saiyans to let emotion take over like that, it's much easier for half Saiyans because they are part human. As a child, Gohan's power level skyrocketed any time he was angry. Goten and Trunks achieved Super Saiyan status before they reached 10 years of age. Things should get very interesting when they reach their father's ages. Dragon Ball GT is an alternate timeline. This theory is really more just a way to make everyone feel better about the train wreck that is Dragon Ball GT. The argument over whether or not the show is canon is still an ongoing battle, especially because it isn't based off a manga like all the other series. But hopefully this theory helps to ease the tension a little. Dragon Ball GT takes place in an alternate timeline, meaning all of the events remain canon, but it's a different series of events separate from Dragon Ball Super. The series deals with time travel all the time, and even alternate timelines like with Future Trunks. So it's not a stretch to think that GT could be an alternate sequel of sorts that splits after the Buu Saga. That means if they do a continuation from Super that takes place during the same time as GT, they can change things up a bit to make it less terrible. They may have to anyway, seeing as how Super Saiyan Blue is definitely stronger than Super Saiyan 4, so there would be no need for that transformation. But we do hear Goku and Vegeta talking about Ub, the human reincarnation of Kid Buu. Therefore, we should get some of GT bleeding into Super, or at least those last couple of episodes after the defeat of Kid Buu. Super Saiyan God equals Guardian of Planet Vegeta. So what is this, Super Saiyan with blue hair dye? <laughs> it's a little more complicated than that. Goku may have achieved Super Saiyan God form, but there was in fact one that came before him. Legend has it that a small group of pure-hearted Saiyans were ashamed by what the Saiyan race had become and sought to destroy the other Saiyans before they could do any more damage. Six Saiyans joined together, pooling their power into one among them who became the first Super Saiyan God. He easily took out all the evil Saiyans, but the transformation was too much to handle, and it wasn't long before the Saiyan God vanished. It is theorized that because of his actions, he became the new God guardian of planet Vegeta. Time went on and evil took over once more on the planet. In another attempt to rid the universe of pure evil Saiyan race, the guardian of the planet brought down a meteor shower to destroy the planet and its inhabitants. Unfortunately, his efforts were all for naught, as many Saiyans were lucky enough to escape and made their way to another planet, took over, and renamed it planet Vegeta. It is this planet that Frieza later destroys out of fear of an uprising. This explains why there are two different stories of how planet Vegeta was destroyed, because there was actually two different planets. After all, King Kai should have known if the meteor story was a farce and wouldn't have told the story to Goku if it weren't true. Yamcha is Gohan's father. <gasps> This one is a bit convoluted and ridiculous, but it could change everything if it holds water. Goten is no doubt Goku's son. They look exactly the same. Somehow it skipped a child, though, because Gohan looks a lot different from his dad. Some fans think that Chi-Chi was sneaking around behind Goku's back, what with him off training all the time. She needed love, and if she wasn't going to get it from Goku, she would find it somewhere else. Enter Yamcha, the man who's been wanting a girl his whole life and never could find one. Well, maybe he finally got his dream. Gohan may not be the spit 
replicating image of Goku like his brother is, but the creators must have copied and pasted him from Yamcha. Minus the scars, these two could be the exact same person. It's because of this that fans believe that Gohan is actually Yamcha's son, and that Chi-Chi cheated on Goku. There is one major flaw in this theory, though. If Yamcha is really the father, then how come Gohan can go Super Saiyan? The fan theory explanation is that Chi-Chi didn't want Goku to find out the baby wasn't his, so she asked Bulma's father, Dr. Briefs, to inject Goku's genetic material into her womb. His DNA merged with Yamcha's and Chi-Chi's, and there you have it. An insane fan theory for an excuse as to why they look the same other than lazy artistic choice. Zeno is a bad guy. Not a whole lot is known about the Omni King. We know he is childlike, similar to Boo. We know he is lonely, given his interactions with Goku and the way others act around him. And we know this little blue guy is the most powerful being to ever exist in Dragon Ball. He is the king of literally everything, and his power is unmatched by all except for maybe his future self. He destroyed six universes in the blink of an eye, and even Lord Beerus can't comprehend how truly powerful he is. It is said that he can even wipe out all of existence, so if he gets bored, he could just end it all by snapping his fingers. Well, luckily for existence, Zeno seems to be more on the friendly side, and he even takes a liking to Goku. But could this change? After all, there used to be 18 universes before he got mildly perturbed. What happens when Zeno gets really upset and decides to take his anger out on the remaining universes? At this point, there would be no one who could even come close to stopping him. So maybe he isn't a bad guy right now, but let's not forget that even after Majin Buu decided to turn good, he lost his temper and gave birth to a being who almost killed every living person on the planet within a couple of minutes. Zeno could definitely become the biggest threat they've yet to face. Frieza lost from being lazy. His power, it's amazing. What? Frieza has a new form. <laughs> I know gold's a bit gauche, but I wanted to ensure you grasp my new position atop the pecking order. Frieza is arguably the most recognizable and iconic enemy from Dragon Ball Z. He is the one that truly set everything in motion for the future of the series. He is also considered by some to be the strongest villain that Goku had to face alone. It took everything Goku had left to defeat Frieza, but we still learn later, Frieza wasn't even close to his full potential. Before facing the Z fighters, Frieza barely even got up out of his chair. He didn't need to try, because he knew no one stood a chance against him. Because of this, he got lazy and didn't even bother trying to get stronger. It was that laziness that was his downfall time and time again. When he was rescued in space after being defeated by Goku, he once again goes back to Earth as soon as possible to exact revenge, only to be sliced into little pieces by trunks. Frieza would be fine if he just trained a little. As we see in Resurrection F, it doesn't take long at all for Frieza to dramatically increase in power. In fact, it took him only four months to find another transformation that could rival Goku and Vegeta's Super Saiyan God form. Unfortunately for him, he got lazy once again, and instead of trading longer to perfect his golden form, he raced to Earth to fight Goku. Frieza has the potential to surpass gods, and yet he's let his overconfidence and laziness get the best of him. Oh, I see. Sounds like you guys had a rough time out there. The great thing about fan theories is everyone can make them. Do you have any creative fan theories to share? We want to hear them in the comments below. Also, don't be lazy like Frieza. Hit that like button for us, and it really goes a long way. Most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to CBR to find more videos on comic books, movies, TV shows, and more.